Hi, my name is Miguel Lopez. I'm a curator, researcher, and writer. I'm recording this video in my apartment in Lima, Peru, in the middle of the second total lockdown due to the second wave of the pandemic. Thanks so much for the invitation to be part of the program from the Rupture Ideas and Actions for the Future, organized by IBIM. It is a real pleasure to be part of this conversation. I have long black hair, silver glasses, and brown skin. I'm wearing a black and, and pink shirt. The background appears, uh, in the background appears some work from my collection, which I love very much. On top, there is a beautiful silk screen by the late drag queen and philosopher Giuseppe Campuzano and artist Susana Torres, produced for the Pride Parade in Lima 2003. On my right, there is a watercolor by Shipibo artist and activist Olinda Silvano, which depicts some geometric symbols uh, of Shipibo Conivo design, inspired by the skin patterns of the cosmic anaconda called Ronin. On my left, there is a beautiful drawing by Janomami artist Sheroanawe Hakihiwe, titled Animal X Together, which shows a constellation made of non-human worlds in process of development. I was invited by IBIM to share a bit about my work in the context of the projects of two fellow artists, Juan Pablo Garcia Sosa and the group Solar Protocol. And as this, as this conversation is related in some ways to cultural exchange across the tropics, I think IBIM thought I could contribute by sharing some reflections about my recent curatorial work. Until last December, 2020, I was co-director and chief curator of Theoretica, a visual arts organization based in San Jose, Costa Rica. Its mission is to contribute to the research and diffusion of contemporary art practices in Central America and the Caribbean in dialogue with global realities. Theoretica is one of the most active organizations in the region and is focused on reinforcing and developing the, pres the preservation of memory at risk of being lost due to precarity, lack of institutions and resources, civil wars and political conflicts in Central America and the Caribbean. I worked there for almost six years. Being part of that project was very important for me, especially because in the last few years, we changed the structure. And since 2018, Theoretica's artistic direction started to be led in a collective way inspired by experimental institutions, artist-run spaces, and the feminist critique of art institutions, Theoretica have come to question its own power structures, hierarchies, and labor divisions that usually determine the institution's work. This led to a desire to collectivize the artistic direction, reconceiving our practice and theoretical principles of solidarity, decentralization, and participation, both in the decision-making process as well as in the and the as well as in the distribution of responsibilities, we saw in that change the possibility to imagine other ways for art administration, curatorial strategies, and research. The aim was to transform Theoretica into a more accessible and dynamic entity, as well as to exercise more transparency and contribute to the questioning of how we build up a cultural institution in the present time. That's a brief context about where I was and about my work in the last few years. As some of the presentations today are related to technologies and popular culture in tropical areas, I thought that perhaps I could share a few ideas about Victoria Cabeza's work, a Costa Rican photographer who in the 1970s created an amazing series of images that counter exoticization and address critically sexual identity in relation to tropical landscapes. Cabezas used humor to explore cliches and stereotypes, as well as the history of economical, economic and political abuse in Central America. I'm going to share my screen. When I met Victoria Cabezas in 2016, on one of my first visits to her house, I learned that she had just thrown out some of the metal etchings she produced in 1973 because they were crazes on their surfaces. 
The work has been the works have been covered with dirt and left in a dumpster to be picked up by the garbage. That morning, we pulled the plates out of the trash and washed them off in her kitchen. She had created these works 45 years earlier, exhibited them just once, then put them away. It was therefore not surprising that Cabeza saw the minimal imperfections inflicted by the passage of time as reason enough to discard works that no one had ever studied or cared for, etchings that had always been ignored. Countering circumstances that consigns works to oblivion, curatorial research should, and I would argue must, help to create cultural value in order to prevent certain bodies of work from disappearing. Cabeza's work from the early 1970s explore the iconography of bananas through photography, photo engraving, and sculpture to critique the exoticization of Latin American culture, the visual economy of masculinity, the stereotypes of tropical paradise, and the foreign interests and US military intervention in countries such as Panama, Honduras, Nicaragua, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. She started this series when studying at the Florida University during 1972 and 1973, and continued with the project after moving back to Costa Rica in 1974. About the origins of the project, Cabeza said, I noticed that the supermarkets carried Chiquita stickers showing that the bananas were from Costa Rica. What intrigued me the most was that when I mentioned Costa Rica to the Floridians, I was frequently referred to as a banana republic. I went to the library and had, my, and had my eyes opened. A lot of what I read was offensive, ridiculous, and misguided. I decided to make use of irony in order to refer to how I perceived that we, the inhabitants of the so-called banana republics, were being viewed by the other, somewhat of a parody of life in the luscious census tropics." End of quote. Two of, my, two of my favorite photographs from, the, from that project are these, where a male friend dressed in an informal attire appears tenderly hugging a large inflatable banana. Her early works, Cabeza's early works, between conceptual art and photo performance, created fictions with male characters, playing with the fruit's sexual connotation and teasing macho stereotypes. In other images of this series, the character appears sitting at a table in the middle of the forest, about to devour a feast made entirely of bananas. In another photo, the character seems to establish a kind of intimate conversation with the banana made of black fabric, creating a situation between religion and ritual. Some of these toy bananas were also transformed into sculptural pieces such as Banana Cabaret, which contains a music box inside, a rare formal solution in Cabeza's production. The replacement of the banana peel with lace and golden sparkles alludes to superficial luxury or glamour. The artist dressed the banana in a burlesque, burlesque style, much like the cabaret shows, as a parody, converting phallic signs of authority into a simulation or theatrical pantomime. The work's crank could originally be activated by the audience, allowing the sculpture to rotate around its axis to the box sound. A similar aesthetics uh, she developed in The Federate Banana, El Banano Emplumado, from 1973, a large format inflatable sculpture that also appears to be a play on theatricality and cross-dressing. The 1960s and, 19, and, 19, and 1970s were the years of large campaigns about Chiquita Banana in various important US magazines, which presented a romanticized representation about the tropics that erased the social, economical, economic, and political realities of the banana plantations, the deeply exploitative working practices, and the displacements of the people of Central America and the Caribbean. 
Cabezas responded to the so-called paradisiacal construction of the plantation worker, worker with boldness and intelligence, highlighting the racialization and sexualization of bodies, of bodies. At a time when it was not common for women artists to use male models in their projects in Latin America, Cabezas not only used white masculine bodies, but stressed the relationship between the banana icon patriarchal social structures, and the history of extraction and Western colonialism. As the scholar Antonella Perisari recently brought about Cabeza's photographs for a show I curated at America Society two years ago, and I quote, in her work, bananas hang from tree branches or grow unnaturally in the ground like mushrooms, laugher, redundancy, masculinization of the banana plantation, albeit invented. These figurations in which Chiquita Banana is turned into a violent message about American racial, racial profiling and pinned to black and imperialistic mottos could not be more distant from the overt expansionist dimension of the mainstream media." End of quote. It is also very powerful the way her photographs were responding indirectly to the banana wars, also known as the American Caribbean Wars, which were a series of occupations and military intervention in Central America and the Caribbean, caused or influenced by the United States to protect its commercial interests. Representation of male body lying on the grass, fully covered with bananas, seems to allude ironically to a rain of bananas, but also to a ritual of mourning. Very few people, however, were able to appreciate Cabeza's critical approaches regarding intimacy, eroticism, and politics. This lack of understanding was clearly expressed in some reviews, including one written by a local critic in 1986, who described Cabeza's series of solarized photos as a perfect example of, and I quote, the impoverishment of photography in Costa Rica, end of quote. She certainly adopted the very opposite of a purist approach to photography. As we saw, she was experimenting with printing photography, photography techniques, including hand-colored copies, the use of reflective materials, solarization, among others. Cabezas was claiming her right to manipulate image and move in alternative ways from the straight photography and documentary trends that often sought to aestheticize war and violence. I am primarily a manipulator, she said in 1984, indicating her distrust of photography, photography's apparent objectivity. In this, in this brief contribution, I wanted to highlight how some of these representations and categories about the tropics have been contested and reformulated from Central America, raising questions about the role of the media and technologies during specific moments in the 20th century. As we saw in that context, Victoria Cabeza's early work offered a powerful feminist approach that counters traditional male-driven mass media representation. She reclaims a sort of female viewership, blurring the limits between reality and fiction, and positioning the body as a performative vehicle that allows to dismantle exoticization, stereotypes, and mythologies rooted in colonial Western imagination. Thank you.